Hi there, folks. Sean Bartok here. I'm in Las Vegas. I was here speaking at The Money Show, and I thought I'd stop by and visit one of my favorite companies because I hadn't been to this branch yet. This is Romina Bolini. She's the key account manager and branch manager for Kushco in uh, Las Vegas, right? right? And uh, so um, Kushco is the premier packaging company in the North American marijuana industry. Uh, they make packages for all sorts of stuff. She's going to tell you what the company is doing, what it's up to. And could you please uh, you. speak to my viewers? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet all of you. And um, yeah, welcome to Las Vegas. Uh, this is definitely one of the most proudest moments for the marijuana space. We were able to open up this beautiful showroom and warehouse location last year in September because there was a need for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a huge, huge stock inventory of all different SKUs available to all of our customers, uh, cultivators. We have our production facilities and then, of course, our dispensaries. And at the same time, if people are looking for some inspiration for their packaging needs, we also have a beautiful showroom showcasing a lot of different samples that uh, people can get some ideas on what they want to do to launch a brand new product of theirs or to maybe recreate, redesign an original product and really get it into the consumer's hands when the clients or the consumers get to go to the market. <laughs> Easy squeezing, right? Yeah, all right. Like that. that took like no pressure at all. Even my mom could do it and she's over 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great, Yeah. thanks. So, um, they do come in different sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our pre-roll too. And the same concept here where you're having to squeeze. It's a little bit trickier. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm s struggling here. There you go. So it works. You yeah. Kind of see right. It's the same concept. Mm -hmm. you typically, a lot of customers put disposable pens in here uh, for the vape devices as well as pre roll combs. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So you basically sell this to all the packaging uh, companies across the U.S. in the individual states. And since every individual state is a silo, they pretty much have to do seed to sale. It's like you're working with all those individual companies, right? Yeah, so our major focus is cultivators, mm -hmm. production facilities, and dispensaries. Okay. Um, everybody, what we're seeing a lot of patterns is depending on the number of licenses they're able to obtain. Mm -hmm. you know, some folks only have a cultivation license, some mm -hmm. folks only have a production license, some folks only have dispensary license, some people have a little combination of two, maybe a vertically integrated option. So we really try to cater to everyone's needs mm -hmm. based on, I handle just the Nevada market right now, so we know the regulations pretty thoroughly out here. Yeah. And they're very straightforward. There's mm -hmm. nothing complicating to it. Just, uh, so um, you guys have been doing packaging for cannabis primarily, but now you're moving into CBD in a big way, right? Could you talk about that? Yeah, about? so we, we essentially, we launched in 2010 um, as Kush bottles, and then we quickly realized that people wanted to do more than just packaging in bottles. So now we have a full, full array, um, over 6,000 different SKUs, focusing on flour, cartridges, um, you know, we can talk about different types of shatters, butters, and so we were really catering to the THC market. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't a beauty packaging industry. We were strictly focused on marijuana, but now that the farm bill had passed, uh, not too long ago, a lot of our customers are now switching gears, wanting to add CBD to their line or going to be launching a whole new CBD division. And now they're looking for specific packaging around beauty. Yeah. So anything from pop top bottles, uh, push lotions to uh, facial creams, containers, people are now turning to the beauty industry infused with some CBD in it. And so Kush is going in that direction. Well, one of the things I do like about your company is it's so adaptable. I mean, when mm -hmm. um, when uh, this company first started out, as you said, it was just Kush bottles, but it's grown and grown and you have separate divisions. Could you explain about that a little bit? Yeah, what we started recognizing is there's a demand for certain divisions and being that this business grows so fast, so exponentially, uh, we needed to hire the right people to be specialists in specific divisions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got probably about five different divisions, everything from our Kush energy line, which specializes in hydrocarbons and solvents, ethanols, dry ice for the extraction process, 
we do have the Kush Supply Co. division, which is all the packaging, everything from stock SKUs to customization of that specific SKU. Uh, we also have our Coledo team. This team is wonderful because it's a group of engineers and graphic design artists that specialize in coming up with a very original SKU. So if you're a customer that definitely has a brand new product or you want to launch a product, depending on your minimum quantities, we can create a brand new, never seen before type of custom SKU for you. Um, that means a whole new package. So whole new package doesn't even exist. Really interesting. If, yeah. If I had the talent, that's that's the kind of division I would want to work. Yeah, with. it's a lot of fun there. These guys are really really busy. They're cranking out because not only are they trying to help our customers that are looking for a very unique SKU, but we're also trying to add SKUs to our SKUs. You know, a lot of customers are asking for very specific needs based on the regulations or compliances of their state. So we're trying to cater and come up with a SKU that is going to be marijuana compatible, uh, a child resistant compatibility, maybe an opaque compatibility as well too, mm -hmm. advertising space, as well as customization. Right. They want to make it their own. So we want to be able to showcase and fit all that criteria and make it available to our customers when they're ready to launch a new product that will fit perfectly for that specific SKU. Um, and uh, one other thing I like about your company is every state has its own rules. So they have their own rules on like how to package stuff. And I can't think of any other industry that has to deal with this. It's like nuts. Mm -hmm. But so your company is actually able to weave through that web and actually come up with like individual packaging in each state. Isn't that right? Yeah, no, I mean, we definitely have a, a team, uh, our product development and product management team. So mm -hmm. their goal is always to get inquiries about different products that exist. So we allow, people, businesses that actually have created a product to try to see if we can integrate it with our SKU list. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have a line of expertise in our division, uh, the Kaleido team that is helping to see what are going to be the, the negative side of certain packaging versus a positive and how can we cater so that we're catering to all states. We're catering to what kind of product is going to go into that product mm -hmm. because all those are going to matter, you know, depending on if a user wants to heat uh, any of their marijuana. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the package is able to be heat compatible and heat mm -hmm. safe. Sometimes a very high terpene profile can start to break down the interior of a package. We need to keep, keep in mind of the durability of that packaging mm -hmm. as well, too. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Speaking of breaking down packaging, you guys have come up with an environmentally friendly line of packaging yeah. that will actually break down over time. Could you explain that as well? Yeah, so we're really excited to be launching um, our new partnership with uh, Aiko Sungrown, and their specialty is compostable packaging sustainable packaging and the whole idea here is for example just the demand alone for pre-roll tubes we're producing about 10 million of these per month mm -hmm. 10 million plastic tubes per month and it breaks everybody's hearts that these tubes you know are not compostable and so the whole idea is we want to come up with an option for our customers to be able to switch over a plastic pre-roll tube into a compostable and over the course of six months that tube turns into dirt so if i take that tube and i go put it in the soil outside my home which because i live in florida there's half swamp half sand mm -hmm. um and i wait six months it'll just it shred just, down into yeah small into bits. Stuff. it just hurts yeah it's made of natural ingredients like potatoes and corn so that over time just starts to break down and it's environmental friendly Excellent. Which brings me to the yeah. next thing I want to talk about is because you have to invent all this stuff, you have intellectual property, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you have over like 40 different patents and and like stuff like that. I think that gives your company an, an advantage as well. From my view, if say things were legalized and a larger company wanted to move into the space, the easiest thing for them to do would be to purchase your kind of company because it makes all these things and it has all the intellectual property to actually do that. Yeah, no, I mean, this is not just a group of, you know, stoners or kids <laughs> that are locked up in a room coming up with these concepts. I mean, we have an entire general counsel team, you know, that are making sure that they're researching and making sure that they're cross-referencing all the rules and regulations for each state. Um, you know, we don't just go in there and partner up and sign at the dotted line. We It's definitely a development, a partnership that we look over the course of time to see that 
how is this going to make an environmental impact for the right way, but also how is this going to make a, an impact for both companies as well too. And most importantly, most importantly, what we did is we reached out to a lot of our top customers mm -hmm. to ask them, what is most crucial? What is most important? What is it that your consumers of your product are requesting? Hmm. And a lot of a lot of these consumers, when they go to dispensaries, often complain like, "What a waste! What a waste that we're having to use all this plastic, and hmm. now we can't, you know, return it. We can't recycle it. Right. So now we're going to have this solution available, and I know our customers are going to embrace it. But most importantly, it's environmental friendly and the actual customer itself, the ones that are purchasing the product, you know, we're being able to meet everybody's needs in that way. Okay. Well, I know in the last quarter sales grew quite well and you're expecting to hit between 130 million and 150 million across the company this year. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, uh, um, so business is booming. Um, do you see any obstacles you might have to overcome or else what are you guys planning? Yeah, I mean, we the, the biggest obstacle that we have is we're trying to keep up with the demand mm -hmm. of the market. You know, a lot of these companies are merging. There's a lot of acquisitions happening. So an order that used to be 10,000 units now has turned into a 50,000 unit. Mm -hmm. But then multiply that by all the customers across the nation. Now, partners, vendors that we have can't keep up with our demand. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenges that we face because I may, I may have a customer ready to purchase 200,000 units per month but I don't have the vendors that are going to be able to supply me that inventory fast enough. Mm. And so it's really hard to really get that growth when we don't have the inventory to be able to supplement the demands of the market. Where so, are most of your products made? Um, we do domestic and international. Okay. So we just hired a brand new vice president of packaging and we are extremely ecstatic about this because we do have quite a bit of relationships on a domestic level as well as an international. She's going to just bring in a whole level of new relationships that we need. Because as I mentioned before, we have vendors that have been able to handle the small to medium amount of quantities, mm -hmm. you know, five, three, three, five, six years ago. But now today, fast forward almost, uh, gosh, 11, 12 years, we have customers that are really demanding big quantities and unfortunately the vendors that we worked with either we keep them and or we have to sever those ties and move on to bigger customers that are going to be able to keep up with that demand well actually i was using that as a setup for my next question which okay. is does the ongoing trade battle we're having with china affect you guys does um does the fact that things might get slowed down at the port or else things like that is that going to be a problem for you you know what there is it definitely has made a, an, an impact and a concern on both Cush Supply Co. as well as our customers having a real, real alarming concern that, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, they're going to be rolling out this ginormous charge. And so as a result, the concern because prices are going to go up. Cush has done a phenomenal job of being proactive about this approach. Mm -hmm. um, when the taxes were increased, um, Kush take, took it upon themselves to actually absorb the majority of that tax and mm -hmm. only roll out a small percentage amount mm -hmm. back to the customers just to quote unquote be fair. Mm -hmm. Like, hey guys, we understand. We understand that we're trying to grow businesses here. We're going to go ahead and absorb the bulk of that for you and we'll just roll out a small amount. And we've had nothing but an extremely positive experience with that. Okay. You know, moving forward, just, you know, uh, we will continue to work with our Chinese vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a wonderful global sourcing team that resides in China, and their job is to be sourcing new vendors within China and outside of China. So maybe Vietnam or yeah. Like so that. wherever they're looking for right now, we're looking at different places, and maybe China doesn't even have the right vendor for us anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a better vendor in a different location, and as a result, we want to be able to provide options for our customers. We want to be able to get the, the inventory that is being requested. We want to be able to have that customization capability. So there's nothing that's going to stop us. We're mm. going to find a way, and we've got the right people in place to be able to make that happen for right. you guys. So just mm. give us time. <laughs> Massive growth, rolling yeah. out new products, uh, hardly able to eat demand. Uh, that That is a problem that many, many businesses would like to have. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more questions. Do you have anything you'd like to add before we go? Yeah, no. Um, if you ever wanted to 
stop by our location here in Las Vegas. Uh, we welcome you with open arms. We have a beautiful showroom. We'd love to be able to help you out. Um, and no, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. I hope you enjoyed this interview. I'll have more for you. This is Sean Broderick from Las Vegas. Bye.